What's up, everyone? This is H.A. Duke. I am co-owner of the returning HP, uh, HCW. It's going to be dubbed as HCW 3.0. Um, this is a second episode of Livewire. I'm going to go solo on this. Um, basically, just wanted to kind of get it out there and let everyone know that you know we're still working on Uprising 4. Matches have been recorded, segments have been recorded, and Daniel is working on putting it all together. Now, it's probably going to be a couple of weeks before we actually get the show finished and released because we are going to be dual commentating it. I'm not quite sure how long the actual CPV itself is. There's eight matches on the card. If you haven't been to the HCW forums yet, be sure you check those out. I'll put the link down in the description, and you can go and check it out and see you know what the uh, card's going to be. Now, as far as HCW 3.0 is concerned, we've got a, a lot of plans going in. We've already come up with a few storylines. We've got a really, really awesome idea for a new title that I honestly and truthfully don't believe it's ever been done in call before. Uh, so I'm not going to reveal what that is just now because I want to make sure that Daniel's cool with it before we you know, leak any information like that. It may be something that we decide just to have be a surprise that we just unveil during our actual episodes of Showdown. Now as far as how HCW 3.0 is going to be run, the plan is once we get Uprising 4 finished, Daniel is going to try and get himself an Elgato. I'm going to try to get an Elgato as well. I'm not 100% certain when I'll get one. I was hoping I was going to get one a couple of weeks ago, but it didn't work out. My wife and I have decided uh, we'd need a second vehicle, so we're actually trying to put money back for that. So, you know, of course, as always, you know, real life comes first. I do have my Dazzle. It still works great. Uh, the Dazzle is actually what I use to record Uprising 4, so you guys, whenever you get to see the CPV when it's completed, you can be the judge of how well you think the quality is. Um, but anyhow, what the plan is, is our main show is going to be called Showdown, and we're hoping to try and do at least one episode every two weeks. Um, now, as far as how we're going to do the episodes, if Daniel's recording them or if I'm recording them, commentating we haven't really worked that out yet we may end up just taking turns like have him record an episode i record an episode and then put it together and you know whoever records commentates that type of thing so we're not getting burned out we may try to do it that way i'm not 100 percent certain uh, our other show is going to be called recharged and what with recharge is actually going to be a weekly webisode where it's maybe going to be one or two matches typically matches pertaining to calls that may not be featured on showdown and it also can be used to uh, help complete tournaments that are going on, you know, to crown champions and stuff. Those shows will most likely be not or not be commentated, other than a brief uh, introduction and maybe uh, an outro, basically just to tell you what's going on um, within HCW, kind of like what we're going to be doing on the podcast. Now, of course, Livewire itself. There's going to be a third episode of Livewire that Daniel and I are going to do, and we're hoping to pull in a couple of our friends. Um, to go into the, this podcast with us, and it's basically just going to be a breakdown for Uprising 4, where we're just basically going to talk about the matches, uh, who's facing who, why are they facing one another, what you know, predictions, that kind of thing, just basically like a panel of analysts, if you will, just for fun. Um, we wanted to do that with the 64-call tournament that we did in RCW a, a couple of years back, but for some reason, our Skype uh, recorder didn't work, and we didn't realize it. We talked for like two freaking hours. I mean, we analyzed 64 matches <laughs> and uh, talked about it and everything and then realized it didn't record anything. And so it was like, oh, screw this. You know, we didn't do it again. But hopefully with the Uprising 4 podcast, we're going to try and get that working and hoping to pull in Nerdy, possibly. Um, he's having problems right now with his um, with his tablet, so I don't know if we'll be able to get him in on it or not. Um, our friend Osiris would probably try to get him involved, maybe Miser, and also try to pull in Gregory Black if all things work out, depending on when we're going to do it. Um, and that's basically, you know, that'll be Livewire Episode 3. That'll hopefully be done maybe within the next week or so, and an Uprising 4 will hopefully be... I w I'm wanting to try to shoot for three weeks from now. Today's July the 1st, so hopefully by July 22nd we'll have Uprising 4 released. And once that happens, we're just going to go straight into HCW 3.0 Season 1 and just go from there. Um, now, a couple of things I want to talk about also in this podcast. Uh, Daniel, pretty much, uh, his podcast, he basically talked about how he got started in call, how him and I met, and how OFW, RCW merged to create HCW and, you know, things like that. So there's really not much else that needs to be said. Um, anyone who knows me you know, knows that RCW was created 
based on my um, backyard federation that I ran back in the mid to late 90s. Um, you know, that's where I got the idea because it was Redneck Championship Wrestling, and of course we changed it to Rampage Championship Wrestling, and I made it a call league. So that's basically how RCW came to be. It was probably around June 2008, I believe, when I first, you know, I did my first episode. It was just eight calls, started an eight man tournament to crown the first champion. I think I had, like, I remember Johnny J and Spectacular, and there was Wu Tang Man, Mr. Vengeance who later became Eli Vengeance. And then I had the Incredible Hulk, the Riddler, Mr. Incredible. Um, actually, I don't know if I had the Riddler yet or not. I think he may have come a little bit later. I'm not 100% certain. But I do know I had the Incredible Hulk, and Mr. Incredible. I had the Locomotive. And I can't remember who the eighth guy now was now. But anyway, so I did an eight-man tournament. Of course, it all boiled down to my first CPV, which was uh, RCW SummerSlam, and that's where Johnny J won the title. Um, so uh, that's basically how I got started, and of course the rest is history, which you know Daniel very well went over it, covered it all in episode one of the Livewire podcast. So if you want to learn more about how we got together and how we started HCW, then you know just go back to episode one because there's no point in me really you know going over that again. Um, I do want to bring up one thing though about. Um, I was on vacation uh, all of last week, the week before we were doing Bible school at my church. So the past two weeks have been really busy, hectic for me. Uh, I, this is the first time I've actually had an opportunity to really sit down and do anything call-related. And I figured, hey, you know, I want to go ahead and do an episode of Livewire just to keep the ball rolling, keep interest, you know, sparked for HCW. But anyhow, one thing that I did notice, um, which I really do appreciate, and I want to give a shout-out to Frank, uh, he came over to our forums and he posted on our shout box and uh, he's basically just talking about things that happened back in, I think it was 2011. Um, we had a, a falling out between us and, uh, you know, things got really, really hot and heavy between us and, you know, as a result, Daniel and I just basically pulled out of doing call and that's how, that's where we stopped with HCW. Uh, he apologized, you know, for a lot of things that he had said and done, which, I mean, he's apologized before, and I have apologized to him, and, you know, we have mended the fence and, you know, buried the hatchet and, you know, we're, you know, became friends and everything. I actually, you know, came all over to WEDF and, you know, helped out for a while. <clears throat> I was, you know, I commentated ECCW for a while, and, of course, my character, Wu-Tang Man, who later became Duke Ammons, was in uh, WEDF for a short time. But uh, anyhow, I just wanted to give a shout out to Frank, and I want to say I appreciate what you've done, and I appreciate uh, the apologies, and, and uh, basically just you know offering to be there for us, help out, advertise for us, you know, try to help us get you know our subscriber count up, and you know I do really appreciate that. That's really classy of him, and I just wanted to give a shout out to him for that. So uh, anyhow, um, moving on from there, uh, I wanted to talk to about spectacular, the call spectacular. Um, if anyone doesn't know, I'm just going to go ahead and go briefly into it. Um, he was based off of a real-life friend of mine named Jimmy Halliburton, and he was a forest ranger, and he worked out in Lenore, North Carolina. And he was killed on August the 14th of 2014. He was out working, and they were trying to move a tree from the road, and the equipment they were using apparently malfunctioned. I'm not exactly sure how it happened, but the tree broke, and it flew back and hit him in the chest and killed him instantly. Um, and as a result of that, uh, I pulled Spectacular. I think I was doing ICW at the time. And uh, I pulled Spectacular, and I just kind of lost momentum and, you know, I just kind of lost interest of doing Call because of that. So um, Spectacular, the Call, as of this moment, or, you know, at that, that moment, but officially now, is 100% absolute retired. He will never be used again out of respect to uh, my friend Jimmy because I just don't, you know, with my friend Jonathan, when he passed away back in 2009, things were a little bit different then as far as uh, how call, you know, how I did call, and um, I still had a really good relationship with his sister, and she wanted me to continue to use the character Johnny J, um, because you know she just felt that he would have wanted it that way. Because I mean, me and him, we went around and played these SmackDown games probably ever since 2000. I mean, 2001, 2002, whenever they on the original PlayStation. And uh, Jonathan and I, we know, we just played all the time. So with Jimmy, it was a little bit different because he wasn't much of a gamer. Um, he gave me permission to make a character after him. And, you know, I think he watched a couple of the shows and laughed about it. You know, he thought it was really funny and really cool or whatever. But he didn't really have any interest. So uh, 
out of respect for him, I'm, you know, I'm officially pulling Spectacular for good. So you won't see him anymore. In fact, Spectacular will be inducted into the HCW Hall of Fame at Uprising 4, along with Daniel's dad, Michael Barber. Uh, but yeah, so, you know, I just wanted to kind of go over that. So if anyone's out there that's ever used Spectacular or maybe currently using Spectacular in their leagues, I do ask to, if you kindly would remove him from your league. Um, I definitely appreciate it. I don't believe there is anyone, so, you know, just in case. Uh, so moving on from there, talk about Uprising 4 just briefly because, like I said, I want to kind of do the whole uh, analyst analyzing thing with the panelists and stuff. And uh, there's going to be eight matches. Uh, one of the main events is going to be Wu-Tang Man, now known as Duke Ammons, taking on Smokey and Three Stages of Hell. Now at Uprising, we've the, the first three Uprisings, we've always had a Three Stages of Hell match that's going to be the main event of the CPV. So, you know, we figured, hey, let's go ahead and do it again. And one thing that's really interesting about this match is that Wu-Tang Man slash Duke Ammons is in this match you know, against Smokey. And he has been in the, fir- the other three as well. So this will be the fourth uprising and the fourth time that he's been in the triple threat, uh, three stage or not triple threat, but just three stages of hell. The only triple threat one was uprising two and uprising three, I believe. So yeah, I mean it's going to be kind of cool. This you know that match is going to be neat. Um, I played it out. I made it a really good match. I think people are going to enjoy it. Um, some of the other matches, um, every uprising before, we've always done an elimination chamber, and we've used all of our monsters, you know, and we call it the Monsters Brawl. Well, this year, instead of doing Monsters Brawl, we're doing what we're calling it the um, Legends Chamber or Legend Arena. And uh, it's going to be six legends from the past of HCW that have been former RCW, OFW, or HCW world champions. Those six guys will be in the chamber. And uh, I'll, you know, if you haven't been to the forums yet, definitely go visit, and you'll see who those six guys are. I don't want to really want to go into talking about the people and analyzing them or anything right now. A uh, few other matches um, that are happening at Uprising Four. Um, let's see, Aaron Fletcher versus Skull Raider. That's going to be a special match. Um, there's actually a special added stipulation that will not be revealed until Uprising Four. So it's going to be pretty interesting to see what that is. And the whole purpose of that match is that if anyone saw the 64-call tournament that we did a couple of years ago, it came down to Fletcher and Skull Raider in the finals, and Skull Raider won. Um, now, Aaron Fletcher, anyone who's uh, followed RCW or HCW in the past, they know that I've really pushed Fletcher, and uh, you know, I've gone you know, really far with him. I kind of, kind of flubbed with him a little bit on Uprising 2 where I had him face Chuck Norris. That was supposed to be a storyline that was going to, help him break away from the heel bully tactic and turn into a face but of course that kind of flopped but uh anyhow so it's gonna be fletcher and skull raider uh that'll be a good match we got uh the closing of the carnival anybody who followed ofw knows adam and beelzebub uh they were part of the tag team called the ministry they will be facing one another that's gonna be a good match <clears throat> we got a showcase battle royal that'll be on the pre-show it's going to be uh, 20 men, and it's all it's 20 guys that will be on the new HCW 3.0 roster when we start. Now, on the roster itself, I'm going to move. I'm moving from Uprising 4 now, and I'm actually going to start talking about HCW 3.0 roster. Like I said, if you want to know more about Uprising 4, visit the HCW forums. It's hcw3.boards.net. I will put the link down in the description as well. But um, anyhow, talking about the HCW roster itself. Now, there's only a handful of people, maybe four or five people, that have been in prior leagues that Daniel and I have run, whether it be ICW, HCW, OFW, RCW, or uh, uh, World Wrestling Honor. There's only a few of them. A lot of these guys Daniel and I have created brand new. We've also had our friend Nerdy Hippie. He submitted a couple of guys. Osiris has submitted a couple of guys. So you're going to see a lot of new people. Of course, this is an all-original call league. There's not going to be any uh, anybody from WWE, TNA, Ring of Honor, you know, any of those, those real-life federations. This is all original call. Uh, we've done our best to work on gimmicks, move sets, uh, entrances to try and make each call unique. Um, of course, you know, you're always going to look at a call and you're going to say, oh, well, that's a Shawn Michaels clone or that's a 
Stone Cold clone or an Undertaker clone. And it's really easy to identify them, you know, based on their move sets and their entrances and basically you know, the gimmick, how they're portrayed on the show, you know, the storylines, whatever. Um, we're going to do our best to try and stray away from that and try to make each call original. Now, there will be a few that's going to be very, very close, if not, quote, ripoffs of real-life wrestlers. And that's, you know, completely unavoidable in all honesty, you know, because when you're playing with a game that's got all the characters like that, you can go through and create however you want to, and there's going to be some similarities to a real-life wrestler. But we're going to do our best to try and make them all different. You know, we've got a tag team division. We're also going to have a women's division. We're going to have a women's champion. You know, it's 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 pr- going to be pretty awesome. Um, talk Now we're going to move on and talk about the titles that we're going to have. There's one title that, like I said, is going to be very, very unique. Well, actually two titles that are unique, but one, we've never done it before. I don't know if any other leagues have ever done this, so I'm not going to discuss that title right now. I'm going to wait and see if Daniel wants to reveal that or if it'll be a surprise later down the road. But, of course, we're going to have a world champion. Um, we're going to have what's called an Iron Ring Championship. Now, the Iron Ring Championship is going to be an Iron Man matches. It's going to be, fifth, I think it's 15-minute matches if it's contested on a regular show and a 20-minute match if it's contested at a CPV. There will actually be Iron Ring matches that will, you know, like a your brackets and stuff, you know, to determine who's in contention for the title, who's going to move up to number one contendership, uh, things like that. So, you know, it's going to be one of those things to where, You'll have a tournament, then you're going to have your champion, and then by based on the brackets, you know, who's in that division, and you can tell who is uh, in contention for the title. We're going to have tag team champions. We're going to have a hardcore championship, and we're also going to have a cruiserweight champion. We've actually got a crap ton of cruiserweights. Some really, really interesting characters. You know, I think people are going to like them and take to them, and, you know, it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, now, there's a rumor. It's on the forums, but Daniel and I are not 100% certain if we're going to do it yet or not. But we're talking possibility of having a women's tag team division because we do have 15 women calls right now. Uh, we're looking to bring in a 16th. Um, we've already discussed it with Black. We're waiting to see you know, if he's going to submit a, a female call for us to give us our 16th call. But uh, if it works out, then we're going to possibly have a women's tag team division as well. So there's going to be plenty of titles, plenty of divisions. Basically, all the calls are going to have something to work for. There's not going to be calls that are just there for no reason. Of course, you know we'll have our jobbers, but uh, each call should have something to work for. So, and uh, people can actually pick calls out that they enjoy, that they like. You're not going to see a cruiserweight champion that's going to jump straight from cruiserweight all the way to world title contendership. It's going to be a build-up. You know, they're going to work towards it. Same thing with hardcore. You might have a guy who's in the hardcore division that stays there forever, never goes up. You might have a guy who wins the hardcore title, defends it for a while, and then moves up, say, to Iron Ring. Iron Ring champions, for instance, they may move up to the World Championship. Yeah, so it's going to be each each tier is going to have certain people in it. So it's not going to be like like you see on Universe Mode on the WWE games now, where like one guy's in every freaking title, you know, contendership, and it just makes no sense. We're going to try to stray away from that and try to make it more believable more interesting, more diversity, and that way it's, you know, something, a little something for everyone. You know, you got your cruiserweights, you got your hardcores, you got your technical wrestlers, you got your traditional wrestlers, and then you got your powerhouses, you know, you got your jobbers, you know, and then you got a lot of tag teams. Right now I think we've got ten tag teams. So uh, we've, we've got a really, really strong roster, and like I said, check it out. We'll probably do another podcast later on talking about each guy that's going to be on the HCW 3.0 roster. Kind of give like a brief summary about him, just kind of like, you know, tell you who he is, whatnot. But you'll get to see 20 of those guys at Uprising 4 on the pre-show. So definitely check it out. Um, I guess the next thing I'll talk about real quick here will be the HCW forums themselves. Like I said, the link is hcw3.boards.net. Now, there's really awesome stuff here on the forums. You know, we've got the top uh, bracket of the forums. is called HCW Today. That's where you're going to find all the information about HCW under the HCW headquarters uh, board. Then we've got, of course, one for Showdown, Recharge, our CPV, which right now is Uprising 4, and then Livewire, which is the podcast that we'll be doing. The next one is Fan Access, which we've got the HCW roster, HCW title history. We've got the, an RP arena where people who have calls in HCW are more than welcome to come and role play anytime they want just for fun. 
sometimes we have done it in the past have had um, great role plays which I'll use a, a great example back when Oshie Jacks was a part of HCW a few years back he came to our forums and he started role playing and himself and Osiris and Miser with his cutter, our character Keith Cutler they started doing some incredible role plays and we transitioned those role plays into a storyline um, so like I said it's possible that role plays you know, can definitely help out <clears throat> we have a free agents pool where if you've got a call and you would like him to be considered to be brought into HCW, you're welcome to post there. You post, you know, about your call, pictures, names, his height, weight, past accomplishments, a video of him, you know, whatever you want to post. It's open, you know, freely for you to post however. And you never know, we may end up using him. Um, my goal would be to eventually, depending on how HCW 3.0 does, if we do really well and it takes off and gets a lot of popularity, I would love to do something similar to an NXT type uh, thing, but actually do like the original NXT where we have about maybe 16 brand new calls and kind of throw it in there with Survivor as well maybe and actually have it go for an, a contract on HCW. Maybe the top two guys get a contract or something. You know, whoever the finalists are. You know, something fun. We've got a miscellaneous board where you can come and talk about public res or public public wrestling it's supposed to be professional wrestling <laughs> i got to change that but anyways so you can talk about the real world wrestling entertainment anything else you know we got all those boards then the history of hcw which is where we contain we have the hall of fame the past hcw call award winners and hcw championship history and that's all on our forums hcw3.boards.net and of course we have a shout box you know so you're welcome to come and check that out um something fun that we're going to do on our forums which it's going to be a while before i get it set up we're going to have um, a bank and a shop where you basically can go in and buy things. I'm going to try and see if I can make it to where each call that is in HCW has a, quote, trading card. And you can actually buy the cards and basically you're trying to uh, collect all of them type thing. So uh, that that's what the ultimate goal is for HCW shop. Uh, of course, we're going to have a stock market, which I'm going to go in and change it around a little bit and kind of you know, make it more call related, probably have something like a stock for actual HCW itself and then maybe one for uh H. A. Duke Entertainment and then like the Uncool Dad, Dan B Productions. Um may even throw W E D F on there for fun. And you know, you just go in and basically you buy stock and, and it constantly fluctuates and changes. It's it's done, you know, randomly. So, you know, type thing. And you earn money from, you know, posting and, you know, participating on the forums and stuff like that. So that's something we're working on. It's, like I said, it's a work in progress. It's not going to be something that will be done in the next few weeks. It may be a month or two before I really actually get that completely done. But just something, you know, to kind of set our boards off and make them a little bit more unique, a little more fun, give give people who come something to, to do, something for fun. Um, and I think that's really pretty much about it. I don't believe there's really anything else I needed to discuss or I wanted to discuss here on this podcast. I just basically wanted to let everyone know that, you know, HCW, you know, we're still working on it. I know we've been quiet for the past couple of weeks, but like I said, you know, we've both been real busy. You know, Daniel does work full time and he's got, a, you know, a one year old and he's fixing to get married next month. So, you know, it's, it's, you know, real busy times here, you know, and so, you know, wherever he misses, I'm going to pick up and vice versa. So, that's about it. <laughs> I, I know I've been kind of rambling on and on here, and I hope this was an enjoyable podcast. I hope you learned something, you know, for about it about HCW, and I hope you know the fans out there that you know liked HCW in the past that you guys are getting a little, you're getting excited, and you know, and I hope that we can deliver and make each HCW fun again. You know, that's our ultimate goal is just to make call fun again, to take all the seriousness out of it. You know, because it just got to the point where it was just way too serious. I mean, people were acting like their call was real and, you know, talking about contracts and misusing their call. And, you know, it was just really ridiculous. And, you know, in all honesty, you fall back on the fact that call is supposed to be fun. It's not supposed to be taken seriously. It's supposed to be a hobby, something that you enjoy doing. Where you know the creator should be able to enjoy doing it and putting it together, recording matches, editing, you know, coming up with ideas and storylines, and the viewers should enjoy watching the show. 
Uh, and if they don't like an outcome of a match or they don't like a particular call going over, it's just like real wrestling, you know, in a way. That means, you, you know, you're doing something right. If a viewer actually watches an entire match or an entire show, for that matter, and they get something out of it, whether it be positive or negative, that, that helps the owners of the league. That helps the creators. You know, that inspires us. That keeps us going. I know the same goes for Frank, you know, with him doing um, WEDF. Osha Jackson, you know, he's just now starting up WEDF NXT and, uh, you know, things like that. I, I, that's what inspires any creator is the viewers, the people who come in and they post comments and suggestions and ideas and thoughts and, you know, positive criticism and stuff like that. that that's what keeps us going. That's what makes it fun for us. Um, but anyhow, in closing, one last thing I, do, I did want to say <clears throat> regarding... Uh, Duke Ammons, you know, my call, leaving WEDF the way he did. I never did really go into an explanation of that or why I did that. It was nothing personal whatsoever, nothing against Frank, nothing against WEDF. I just felt that it was time for my call to go. Um, that Frank was very busy with his real life, and, you know, shows were, you know, really far between. My guy had just won the Intercontinental title from Smokey with an awesome feud that they pulled off where my guy, you know, dropped the Wu-Tang Man gimmick, went heel, became Duke Ammons. You know, Frank and I, we put that together ourselves, uh, you know, and the whole thing turning on Smokey, that, that was done so perfectly, so well, so awesome. And I finally won the, my t- the first title that I had ever won in the entire two to three years that I was in WEDF, the Intercontinental title. And uh, I don't want to sound sour by saying this, but I, you know, I do want to throw it out there, and it's nothing personal. But uh, Frank had talked to me, and he told me the plan was for me to drop my title to, um, I think it was Evan Bourne, I believe, at the following CPV. And it, it kind of rubbed me wrong because I felt that, hey, you know, my guy's been in your league all this time, and he's finally won a championship. And in call time, not not how long it takes him to do a show, but actual call time itself, four episodes of SmackDown and then a CPV. And I was going to drop the title to Evan Bourne after just winning it. So basically I was going to hold it for four weeks and then drop it. And to me that was just kind of, yeah, you know, it didn't make much sense to me. I felt that it would have made more sense to have had Smokey come back and either interfere somehow and make it a DQ which, I mean, the ultimate plan was to have a triple threat. And, you know, it was going to be Duke Ham and Smokey and Evan Bourne and then, you know, Wu-Tang Man and, and Smokey were going to fight amongst themselves and Evan Bourne was going to end up kicking up the wind to retain his title. All great and wonderful. But I think it would have been better if Duke would have held the title up to that triple threat match and then Evan Bourne pinned Smokey, for, you know, for example. And in that way, Duke Ammons is like, hey, you know, I didn't even lose my belt. And then Duke and Smokey can continue their feud, you know, whatever. But, hey, WEDF, that's his thing. I'm not, you know, I have no control over any of that. And like I said, I'm just going to stop there because I, I don't want to come off sounding sour about it or, up, you know, upset because it was really beyond that. You know, there was more factor to it is that, you know, at the time I, I was going to try and do WEDF NXT and um, I just kind of got burned. And I was thinking, you know, as I actually had recorded the first episode of it, had it all ready to go. And I just got to thinking about it, and I was like, you know, when I do call, I want to do original. Um, I just, I'm not good with working with real life wrestlers. And the NX, the guys on the NXT roster, you know, Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens and, you know, all those guys, Finn Balor. I was just trying to figure out, they're so, they're, all of them are so freaking awesome. And you know so much about them all, and you want all of them. I think all of them should have been pushed. All of them should have been champion, and it just wasn't going to work. I, I was not cut out for it. And so that's why I stepped away, you know, all that. And I figured it was time for Duke Ammons to retire. He's been around call for seven years, ever since 2008. And it was just time, you know, it was time for him to go. And the only reason I'm having him at Uprising 4 is for a match with Smokey. And I felt that that was kind of a way to end the feud kind of bringing it from wedf to uprising and in a way kind of kind of hoping that maybe people who followed the feud in wedf will want to see this match on uprising four if that's the only match they see you know then okay 
you know, and that that's kind of when it, another thing that I think would be cool about Uprising Four is that Smokey and Wu Tang Man, uh, aka Duke Ammons, have such a history together. You know, they've been friends, they've been tag partners, they've been enemies. You know, they fought each other so many times with Smokey as the heel and Wu Tang Man as the face, vice versa. They fought in RCW, OFW, HCW, WEDF, uh, and there's other leagues that we fought each other in, you know. So this would be like the ultimate the ultimate climax, the, the final showdown between these two guys. And uh, I think it's going to be a good one. So, but like I said, Daniel and I and hopefully a few more of our friends are going to do another Livewire podcast in a couple of weeks, and we're actually going to talk about that some more and get really down and dirty into that feud. And uh, we'll see what happens. See how it goes. So, uh, I guess with all that said, I don't believe there's anything else left to talk about. I uh, just kind of got it all out there. We're starting fresh, brand new. You know, bygones be bygones. Everything, you know, water under the bridge, buried hatchets. We, we have no ill will towards anybody. And we're just going to go with it. And we're going to try to have fun like we did before. And we hope that you guys will come along with us for the ride and that you will enjoy it as well. So thanks for tuning in to Livewire. This has been episode two. And, of course, I'm H.A. Duke. I was your host here today, and I hope you enjoyed everything you heard here. I hope you've learned a little something about HCW, and I hope you'll sign up on the forums. And uh, if you haven't subscribed yet, be sure to hit that subscribe button there in the bottom right corner. We definitely appreciate it. And hopefully Uprising 4 will be up within the next three weeks. So keep tuning in. Be expecting uh, Episode 3 of Livewire to come up here shortly, hopefully in the next week or two, followed by Uprising 4, and then hopefully by the 1st of August, the official launch of HCW 3.0 with the first episode of Showdown. I'm really excited about it, and I hope you guys are too. So thanks for watching. This has been Livewire Episode 2. H.A. Duke signing out. Radio 1 Breakfast Show with Nick Grimshaw.